Hi guys, this is Rickon and welcome back to Comfy Compositing. Today's topic is extremely useful and fun. Once you understand the workflow, the limits are endless. We are talking about AI background replacement for videos, both full background replacement and selective replacing only in the parts of the background. So most AI background replacement demos you see online have a major problem. They swap the environment but they don't account for camera track or temporal consistency. It might look okay at first glance, but once things start moving, the illusion breaks. This is the main reason why pros and the studios are hesitant to use this in a pipeline. So today, I want to show you when the easy way works and when it doesn't. And how to start thinking about AI with a compositor's mindset. We all know the grind manual roto, complex keying, and endless cleanup. It is expensive and exhausting. While we can't ignore those skills entirely, they aren't always required for every single shot. A lot of clients just want the results fast. If we are willing to trade a little bit of control for speed, AI workflows can handle the heavy lifting. Now full disclaimer, and this is important. This workflow is not for someone who's looking for pixel-perfect traditional VFX output. AI does not preserve the original edges. Edges are regenerated, but they look great and they are stable. And they are not identical to the original plate yet. But maybe we will look into the future workflows that will fix this issue. Five years ago, or even two years ago, this workflow wouldn't make any sense. But today, budgets are tighter, deadlines are shorter, and clients understand AI. For previs, concepts, commercial work, and even fast turn-up projects, this trade-off is often acceptable or even expected. Anyways, let's move on to the fun stuff. To pull this off, we are using two main checkpoints, WAN 2.1 Fusion X and WAN Waze. I use Fusion X here because it gives us faster and richer motion details. And then I use one ways to control the contextual, spatial, and temporal coherence. At a high level, the setup is simple. We have one for image to video, Uni3C for camera consistency, and lightweight waste module for conditioning. Remember, you can always swap out the models to fit your RAM. The underlying logic stays the same. Models change fast, but the workloads last longer. Anyways, so when you drag and drop the workflow, you will see a bunch of missing custom nodes. So you can simply go ahead and download those. And then, uh, yeah, here is uh, what you will see. So let's first go over our models. So as I mentioned that we are using the Fusion X on waste module, cause width for speed up. This will speed up the steps uh, by six steps. You'll get a decent result. And then I also mentioned the one UniC control net for cameras. And then VAE and uh, text encoder, these are the usual ones for one ways. And then these are all the folder structures. Now keep in mind um, what I'm using are full precision 14B, but if you wanna use a GGUF or a 1.4B, you, you can easily swap those out. I just go ahead and uh, search on Hugging Face and you will find all of the either GGUF or uh, smaller quantized models. So when you're done with those, placing all the models in the correct folder, you'll have to make sure that all of the models are properly selected. And when you do the, that, um, also I wanna mention block swap. Um, you can leave this to around zero if you have around more than 24 gigabyte of uh, VRAM. If uh, less than, 24, I guess you can change this to 20, 25. I believe one has 36 blocks to swap. And then you have anything less than 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Um, you can turn that up to 36 or 40 to be on the safe side. And then choose your uh, Uni PC, Uni 3C model over here. Uh, moving forward, that, that was our step one, making sure all the important files are in place. And then the next one is we load our video. Um, and then just queue over here to play it. And with over here, you can set the FPS. 
uh, desired FPS. And then over here, you can set the custom width for the output. Um, even if it's 4K, it will change the um, video resolution over here for the whole project. So you can do that. And then uh, frame load cap. This is a number of frames that you want to work with. Uh, moving forward, um, I rendered this mat using SAM3. I did not provide the workflow in this one because I've heard memory leak issues. So I started um, keeping it on the side. So I always keep it on the side, um, render it out and then read it in and uh, just shut that uh, workflow so that any memory leak issues are turned off. Uh, once you do that, I'm gonna change this color. So all of the green nodes is where you have to make changes. Um, for example, this one you have to upload it, but all of these, uh, these I don't know, blue color, whatever, uh, you don't need to do anything. And all of the gray ones are the outputs. Moving forward, you can generate a single frame um, from your clip. It could be start, it could be end, it could be middle. It's your choice. You can go ahead and use uh, Quen or Nano Banana. In this case, I use Nano Banana, uh, Google Gemini. And then I prompted to replace the background with something like, like a Mars tunnel or something like that. So um, it gave me this. And I also think uh, um, that can be a client node, you know, create to decide what the client wants to see. And this is just a test of a completely random thing. So I did that. And over here, it automatically resizes it. And then we come into prompt generation. So I'm using, I really like Quen VL. Um, it uses the latest uh, Quen 3 model, which is very good at reading the image and giving us a detailed custom prompt. For example, we are generating a video. So I told to give a detailed prompt of this image, assume it's a short video and the camera is panning to right. So it gave me a decent result, but I wanted to make some changes. So I copied this over here, made some changes, but you can also simply, if you're happy, you can simply uh, connect over here and then it will automatically load the prompt. Um, yeah, and then these are the negative prompts. Moving forward, um, you don't need to do much over here. You can leave the strength at 0.9. If you do uh, full uh, one, value of one, you will see some artifacts. So I figured uh, 0.9 is a good place. Uh, you can go up and down, but I think 0.9 is pretty good. And the other important thing is uh, over here, one unit three C embeds in the strength. This is the strength of how much camera motion to apply. Um, zero would be none and one would be full. So sometimes one is too much and zero is nothing. So I try to stick it to somewhere in middle. And then next is steps. So because of the cause with Laura, we are able to get away with six steps, which is awesome. Um, and then next is sometimes you have to mess with the CFG. If you think it's not uh, adhering to the prompt, you can bump this up to two, three, I think four, after four, it will give um, weird crunchy results. So you can stick to uh, low values. So moving forward, when you queue this, you should get something, there you go. And then let's compare this to our uh, original video. So here you can see the camera model, uh, camera motion is pretty good and it sort of matches. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with how the camera is working and how the edges are pretty okay. They're not the best. And like I mentioned, it's not pixel to pixel match from our input video, but I think it's still pretty good. We're not seeing any temporal issues or flickering or any weird artifacts. I think it's pretty good. And even the lighting interaction from the surrounding area matches pretty well. So yeah, um, so this was a simple um, workflow replacing the whole background, but I also want to show how you can do just a sections of uh, swap. So for that, I'm gonna show you a different workflow. Um, 
So the workflow is the same, but the footage is a bit different I'm using over here. As you can see, this is from Action Essentials. Um, shout out to Action Essentials for providing us with those free footages. And I use them all the time. Um, so thank you so much. So over here, I took this footage and I thought, uh, what if the client says that he doesn't like the windows? They're too old, too rustic, and you don't see much inside. Um, so I, I came up with... Uh, this sort of look and um, I think I think uh, Google Gemini Nano Banana did a pretty good job um, it still looks industrial which is pretty good um, so and then I thought uh, that if we want to keep everything else the same so we would have to make a mat for just the window right so I tried um, using SAM3 and I prompted and then I I did a lot of tests to get a decent result for the windows, but I couldn't. Um, so my, the nec my next option was uh, using uh, Nuke. I did a very simple uh, camera track over here. Um, very quick, um, nothing too fancy. Um, by the way, if you guys wanna know uh, more about uh, any Nuke tutorials, please uh, let me know in the comments, I'd be happy to do. I've been working as a compositor in the film industry for over 15 years now so anything if you'd like to know please let me know anyways um and this is not a production work this is a very simple um thing i was trying to do so my script is very tiny and it gets the job done that is important um anyway so i crack up the number of features um because there's so much detail and uh some detection updates and um, um, increase the track length and then i try to get a solve error of less than one for something like this i usually try to go 0.5 but i think for this one less than one is pretty good and then with the with that uh, solve i also got lens distortion and a, a pretty good camera track and here is what i got and i think it's pretty nice the the mat sticks pretty well i simply did a, a project from frame 63 over here and i was able to get a get the alpha for the window and then i wrote it in mp4 format and then i read it back in my comfy ui over here um, this is the one and then I also needed um, the rough mat of the people so I used SAM3 over here I had to use two um, SAM3 outputs uh, one was for the gun and one was for the people and then I was able to get the gun with the people now again it's not perfect that is why we don't get um, the original edges but again, um, if AI can give us good edges, then why to worry about it? Anyways, so go back here. And then uh, this is what we should see. So the white area is what we are going to change and everything else will stay the same. And then you're seeing all of these weird edges, white little pixels drifting here and there. Those will be fixed as well. So moving forward, I feed in our reference, single frame, and you can see it's a very big reference. Um, and then it gets resized here. Um, and then it's 832 by 480. Um, by the way, this um, workflow can go up to 720p, but you need a very beefy GPU. Um, plus, I think uh, the maximum... Um, stable length for the video would be 121 frames at 16 fps that's pretty good but again um you need a lot of vram for it so moving forward did the same thing here for a quen v3l and then moving forward everything is the same and then this is what i got so we can see the reflections are moving and even the inside has a bit of parallax which is good and I don't think uh, anyone would be able to tell um, this was AI. Um, of course, we need to video interpolate and upscale it. Um, and I think uh, the output would be super solid.
So let's again compare this with our input video. This workflow trades pixel perfection for speed, flexibility, and creative freedom. For many modern projects, that's exactly the right trade. Here is a challenge for you. Take one shot, do both versions, full replacement and selective replacement. Post your results in the comment. I'm excited to see what you all come up with this workflow. I hope you guys found this video fun and useful. Please like and subscribe to show your support. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.